Okay, g'day guys. Look, uh, today we're going to go through how to work with contours and how to associate contours with a model. Uh, so there's several tools that we're going to need to do this. Um, so what I've done here, you can import a CAD file, so a DWG, which is usually done by a surveyor, and you can just simply go to File, Import, and if you go down to the bottom of the import, you will notice that you can also have uh, DWG, DXF, or there are several different file formats there. We would usually think that would come in DWG and DWX, uh, DWF. All right. Uh, so at the moment, I've just quickly put a simple one in here, so we don't have to go and clean up. If you do import a CAD file, you probably want to uh, select the whole lot uh, and delete the layers and put them all back onto layer zero. So therefore, you won't have a whole heap of um, unnecessary layers that you really don't need to create your model. You might want to keep your trees and things on a separate layer but just delete the layers that are unnecessary and put everything back onto layer zero. I'll just demonstrate how to do that. If you go to here you can go through and you can actually delete a layer. So you can notice I've got several layers in here. If I go delete, now there's nothing on those layers so if there's nothing on the layers you can simply go to purge which will get rid of all the unused layers if I actually had something on a layer so for instance uh, this I'm going to make a quick component I use a shortcut of G to make that component I can now associate this component with a layer so I'm going to call it test okay right click entity info will put something on a layer will give you the ability to change where the layer is now if I go back to this layer here and I go delete it gives you the option to either delete the contents altogether so you can figure that out by looking at DWG or you can say move to content move contents to default layer which I think is probably going to be the case 90% of the time go OK alright so now this is on layer 0 I'll go back to here okay I'm actually going to delete it uh, I don't need it okay there's also if you've got a whole heap of things in your model this little button up here in the plus spec toolbar will purge it which will go through and it'll get rid of everything you don't need go okay you'll notice it's got rid of components materials and st it keeps your model uh, efficient um, so I usually hit it every once in a while especially if you notice a little bit of lag I'm going to close down my layers menu now what I have here is a simple flat I guess it would resemble a block uh, and these here are the contours that that I'm going to use now usually on a contour survey you will notice that you would have a an RL a reduced level associated with a contour so I can go through here and, and, and tell it what the RLs are going to be by simply using the tag tool okay so I can go through to here and say well this one here is going to be we might make this uh, we'll make them in meter increments so I'll make this one uh, one meter or we can go 1m doesn't matter okay uh, a, a usual RL would be um, RL, it might say uh, on your contour plan, RL2, or it might be RL170, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so this one here would be RL3. I'm going to make this one RL4. Typing is terrible, apologies. Uh, and RL5. Now the 5 is basically 5 metres above level. Okay, right, so what I'm going to do is, is I need to actually lift these contours up. Right. Um, so as you can see, if I click all of them, they're connected. But if you're getting a DWG, you might find there's a minute 1 millimetre difference between the lines here and they won't be connected. You do have to try and make sure that all of your contours are connected okay so if that's the case if I did have a little uh, one millimeter gap I'll give you an example here and I'll just quickly just delete this one here notice when I select triple click it only selected the one it's very easy to fix you can fix it a quick way you can just simply don't worry about getting there and now if I select them they'll all be selected if you want to get more precise and it depends on the accuracy you require simply join the two lines together usually you'll see by triple clicking where things are going to happen okay so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move these contours up on a vertical plane so and I'm going to uh, surmise that this is zero 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 which means that what we're looking at is on 
the ground floor plane so it would be I guess related to ocean level. I'm going to select this contour and I'm going to push control and you'll notice as I'm moving it it wants to sort of stick to the face right which means that it's simply moving on that face but if I go up to here I can find a blue line so I'm outside of the model I'm above it uh, and I can do it like that so I could do it like this and go one meter I'm working in millimeters you just put in whatever units you're working in and go enter now I have a contour a meter above the ground I can check that by simply dimensioning uh, I usually set up a shortcut on my keyboard D for dimension and we can do it like that. It's a good way to double check that you've actually moved at the right distance and get used to scrolling around. The center button on your mouse will allow you to orbit the model by pushing it down. If you're using a Mac mouse you can't get one with a scroll wheel and make it a lot easier. I'm going to show you another way to do this as well. I'm going to triple click this one here. I'm going to go to move which the shortcut is M but it's also this tool here and I'm going to push control because I want to leave my ground floor my ground with still the contours on it I can always use it again later now it's gone to blue I was lucky there but notice here uh, I'm, I'm off axes I'm still holding control I'm letting go of control and now if I push the up button on my keyboard it is more likely to go on the vertical plane until I get to somewhere else so if I push up and hold it there okay. I'm on the blue axis. Now I need to write in two meters. Okay, the next one, triple click it, move, which is M as your keyboard shortcut, or this one over here. I'm pushing control now, and I'm moving it up until I see my blue axis. I'm going to type in 3000. You can also type in 3M if you're working in meters, it depends on the unit you're working in. Okay, triple click this one move first which is a keyboard shortcut here move control find my blue axes you can go way up it doesn't matter and you'll notice in the bottom right hand side of the screen there it's telling me a measurement I can write in 4M and enter do it again last one triple click move keyboard shortcut M control up and I'm going to write in 5 meters Okay, now I have all of my contours above my block as they are, which is going to allow me to do sections and so on that associate with the contours. Alright, so let's just get rid of this entity info box, we don't need it anymore. The next thing we're going to be looking for is the sandbox tool. Now if you can't find the sandbox tool, you can simply go up to view, toolbars, and you can go down and you can look for your sandbox. Sometimes it's already open so you might want to click it on and off so it flashes and you can find it easily. I'm going to leave it open down here. You can dock these up here but I think for the purpose of the exercise I'm going to leave it down here. I'm going to go close. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to select all of my contours. Now there's several ways to do it. I've already got one selected at the top there. If I use my spacebar or my select tool I can click this. I can go into the next one. I can push shift and triple click it right this is a slower way of doing it right but now I'm selecting all of my contours above my line above my floor plane right the sandbox tool uh, it has several different options stamp and drape allow you to uh, imprint into the base but I'm going to do it just the manual way I'm going to use from contours that I've selected. It now has created a face. Now if you've got contours that are really really complex and lots and lots and lots of ins and outs and you don't require that much detail draw over the top of them. It's the best way to go about it. You can reduce the amount of geometry that's inside of your model. Okay. Now I have a contour, it's actually grouped it, but the contours that I've got there aren't associated with it. So I can actually move this out of the way. And I can do that by going to my move tool. And I usually like to write in a distance that I can remember. So I notice I'm going along the green axes. You can also use your left arrow or right arrow to select which way you wanted to, to do this. Okay. All right. That's a long red. I'm following the line over here because I started from a location 
but if I was out in space I'm looking for the little change in axes okay I'm now going to type in say uh, 50 meters now I have it 50 meters away I can go back and use that again later now sometimes we want to cut and fill on a job okay which means that essentially we want to have an area where we might have a ground floor uh, sitting on the ground and we want to cut into the soil so how I would do that in this particular instance is I would find where my my ground floor wants to be and usually by now you might have a, a rough floor layout done and it might be as simple as you know rectangles like this and say this is ground floor and this is my first floor and so on and um, we can then go and say well if this is my ground floor I can move it so I'm going to use my shortcut M and bring my ground floor over to my contours so I can figure out where I want it to be on the floor plane but I can also control and I can bring it up to where I want it to be right I'm going to delete this face in here I'm going to go and select all of my contour lines in a different way I'm going to actually go from the top left hand side down to the bottom right hand side and everything that is entirely inside of that box will now be selected Okay. Now if I click my From Contours in Sandbox tool, I actually have a flat surface where I wanted my ground floor to be. Okay. I can select all of that and move it over, or I can just take the contour map over. Okay, so control, move, and I can write in 25 meters. So now I have two different types of contours. If you want to see a little bit more about these contours, if you go up to View, Hidden Geometry, it'll actually show you what's happened. Uh, this is the lines that join everything together. Essentially, SketchUp works on triangles so that it can create a face. Okay. All right. Okay. In some instances, I might want to. I'm going to delete this one here simply just click that selected it and click delete in some instances you might want to fill okay so I might grab my plan over here I'm going to go to move again control and say okay well I envisage that my first floor plan would go to here okay now it's going to be a long way up you can see that you it's up to you to choose the heights that you want to do but I'm going to go in here I'm going to delete this face and I'm going to go and select my lines again, uh, my contour lines. Let's have a look and see what happens when I do it like this. Now if I go from contours, right, you can see what happened, it, it actually followed the original line. So really what I should have done is I should have deleted these lines in here because it's tried to pick those up at the same time as picking up the others. So I'm going to go control Z, which is undo. This works in every single program. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the lines that are inside of my box there and I need to have a look at it in several different locations go to here and delete that one I'm looking from the top down so I'm navigating around the model so I can see what's going on that one is outside of uh, so I'm going to delete that as well Okay, now let's have a look and see what happens. I've gone back to my space bar, which is my select tool. And I'm going to select all of the contours. And I'm going to click from contours. Now you notice that we have a surface at the top there that we can work from. There's a little bit of messing around to, to make sure you get the block the way you want it. Uh, but from these models, or from these meshes, I could s quickly put on a house. So if I went back to here and I drew my uh, house, I might grab plus back here and just quickly draw some rectangles. And go submit. I'll quickly trace around my first floor. All right, I can now move all of this over to sit on my plan where I intended it to go. So I go move, put it over here. 
and I now have my contours that are working to my block. All right. I can also then figure out where my garage is going to sit in relation to that as well. Um, so on that particular block it works okay because I've actually raised it but we might say you know what we don't want to import fill on this particular job we actually want to have it interact with the environment that we're using or our existing and so I've by mistake I've selected a couple of walls there I'm going to push escape you know, right click walls select connected walls and now I'll only select the walls themselves this is part of Pluspec and I move them over to here and now I can see what I need to do, how much retaining I would need to do uh, to actually create this particular job. So I might want to cut the job here or I might want to have this underneath the ground and waterproof it for instance. I can trace on my walls where my uh, ground is going to locate. I've just pushed K there. And you'll notice you can see through the model. I actually meant to push L which is line. This one here and I can simply draw on where my contours work. Okay, keep going down. Notice we've got to join here because I've got view hidden geometry and I can see where the contours are changing. I've got another one here. I've got another one here, and I have another one here. Okay, so what this is going to allow me to do is I can go and hide this now. So I can right click and go hide can now see because my hidden geometry is on through the map and if I turn view hidden geometry off I can see where the ground is going to work with the building I could also continue that line down uh, and have my block in a, in a section if I went over to here create my scenes and I'm guessing that scene number two no. Okay, scene number one is there. I can hide. I've got a keyboard shortcut set up for H. Elevation. You can now see where the ground will be intersecting with my building. I hope that helps out a fair bit, guys. It, it's uh, it, it is complex, but once you get it once, it's very easy to understand what's going on, uh, and you can quickly find out what's going to happen with your block and how you're going to go about it and how you're going to go about multi-levels I'll quickly while I'm here quickly draw some walls in here and we'll see if we can figure out roughly how this house is going to go together we can put stairs and everything in but we'll use it there's another tutorial that will go through that with you okay so there's my garage here's my first floor great way to figure out how you're going to design. Right, we can put our roofs on. And we could also go in here and say well we wanted to have this all work together. Go up to our walls and we can push and pull our walls around. out how this is going to look. I can type in a measurement if I want to, so say I wrote in I don't know, 3.5 meters now, I want to go at least 10 meters, 10 M. Now we've got a really good idea of how things are going to work. We can start to stretch our first floor out. see the distance that we've got between the two. We can actually go back and delete our roof and then go and create a new roof. Submit. Okay. And then we can figure out well how far do we actually want to lift this up. It'll be the distance. So I'm going to select all my connected walls. And I can lift it up minus the distance of the joist. I can now start to connect houses together. Right. 
hope that helps you out. cheers guys.